a new member of the UNLV football team arrives early to practice with the squad, but he says high school is still on his mind. The Lady Rebels made it to the postseason, but lost to Utah in the first round of the WNIT. Coach Olivier explains why this season was anything but a loss. While many think of athletes to be only good in sports, there's one UNLV football player that has talents no one knows about. All this and more coming up on this week's edition of the Rebel Report. Welcome to Studio F on the campus of UNLV for this season's fourth edition of the Rebel Report and our last show before we take a bye week for spring break. I'm Haley Jorkis. And I'm David Stepanian. Yes, we will enjoy our spring break, but here at Rebel Report, we're no slackers. This week, we'll also sit down with the new head coach of UNLV softball, Christy Fox, and visit one of the best players in baseball, Las Vegas native Chris Bryant. Let's get started. Let's pick it up with the Lady Rebels. Making its second straight appearance in the WNIT, they squared off against Pac-12 power Utah March 15th. After taking a brief 2-0 lead, Utah took control and led the rest of the way, downing the Rebs 78-68. Lady Rebels ended their season with a 19-13 record, but with its first ever Mountain West regular season championship, Coach Olivier doesn't want this year to be one to forget. I think any time you get to play in the postseason, it is huge for your program because you want your team to know that the season doesn't end right when the conference tournament ends. You want your team to know that there's postseason. You want your team to know that we can continue to play for two, three more weeks. Everyone loves a good comeback story. While the Lady Rebels weren't able to come back in the postseason, they were able to get a Lady Rebel back. Our own Jafar Robso gives us an inside look at Nikki Wheatley, who returned to the court on a mission in 2018. Nikki Whitley has been outstanding for the Lady Rebels, and to show for it, the team has had the best season they ever had in the Mountain West Conference. Although short in height, Nikki makes up for it in her size, using her body to set screens for her teammates and blow past defenders for an easy layup. The floor general can also find her spots on the floor for easy shots. But things weren't always as easy for Nikki as she suffered a torn meniscus during her sophomore season, putting her out the whole season. That also didn't stop her from learning more about her teammates. Um, yeah, I just want to, after sitting out all season last year, I saw a lot of things that you know I could help this team out with, just being an observer on the bench, obviously, all year. So I really worked uh, really hard in the offseason. I had tons of time to come back. I had the whole entire summer. So I really worked hard on things like improving my shot a little bit and just ball handling stuff and try to come out this season. I wanted to make a difference. So I was able to do that, and I'm happy that I am able to make a difference this year. And a difference she has made. Averaging nearly two steals a game as well as 14 points and six rebounds, it's safe to say she won't be slowing down anytime soon. For the Rebel Report, I'm Jafar Robso. Lady Rebels had a great season and even went to the WNIT, but lost to Utah in the first round. Nikki finished with double figures, and the Rebels finished the season with a 19-13 record overall. Kenyon Oblad, a star quarterback at Liberty High School, set the state's career passing yards mark in September 2017. If that doesn't seem impressive enough, Kenyon committed to UNLV and graduated early from high school to practice with the team this spring. Naomi Brown joins us live in studio to introduce us to the new QB in camp. Kenyon closed his senior year at Liberty with over 2,000 passing yards, 28 touchdowns, and six interceptions. I got a chance to watch Kenyon on the practice field and talk to Coach Sanchez about how Kenyon is adjusting to being a Rebel. So how is Kenyon doing so far with the team, with the guys, and on the field? He's got a good demeanor about him. Um, he's a confident kid. He's got an explosive arm. He's going to have a great career here. But he should still be in high school, you know, so graduated early. He's here right now. The thing I miss the most is just seeing my friends from high school that I've been with all four years at Liberty. But, um, you know, I I'm, I'm really glad I made the choice to graduate early and come up here. I've had a really good time so far. 
the guys have treated me really well since I've been here and uh, I've made a, a lot of good friends. Yeah, mine's been really good. He's taught me a lot of uh, things he knows and helped me with the plays and stuff. And so has Markel and Max. They've all been really good to me so far. I think we had a couple weeks before spring practice to learn the signals, but you know, it came out pretty fast. Like the first week I got here, we started going through everything, going through the signals and the plays. You know, you kind of got to remember that when you're out there and you're coaching them up and you're getting after them a little bit, you remember, God, this guy could be, you know, going, he could be sitting in the lunchroom right now in high school, but you know, he's out here working. I'm looking forward to, you know, starting my major classes and all that. So uh, I'm just excited for the future. I'm Kenny Noblad and thank you for watching the Rebel Report. Although Kenyon is looking forward to graduation, he did tell us that he won't be attending prom. Well, that's it for this story. Back to the desk. I was also there with Naomi, and Kenyon told us that his major is journalism. Maybe our viewers will see him soon as a member of the Rebel Report. We know spring has arrived to Las Vegas when Big League Weekend comes to town. This was the 15th straight year that the Chicago Cubs have come to Vegas as part of their spring training schedule. And our reporter Lupita Negrete has a recap. Big League Weekend is back in town, this time bringing a rematch between two teams that were in the 2016 World Series. A crowd of over 10,000 gathered at Cashman Field March 17th to watch the first of two games between the Chicago Cubs and Cleveland Indians. Clad in green clothing in honor of St. Patrick's Day, fans came out to watch their favorite teams and hopefully snatch an autograph or two. And I'm Chris Bryant. Can you sign your back? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Chris Bryant. And Anthony Rizzo and Jason Hayward. However, this weekend is not just for the fans. The teams enjoy it too. You know, for us, you, you know, because spring training is so much like Groundhog Day, getting us out of there for a couple days and then even coming to Vegas, you know, just lets the guys have a couple nights to do whatever they want, you know, go to a show, gamble, and then we get to play the Cubs in a different atmosphere. So this is really good for us. Yeah. So I went and donated a little bit, just, you okay. know, to the Blackjack. Association of America. You got me going there. No, 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 I, no, I just I gave my little donation and left. The Cubs ended up winning Saturday's game, catching an early 8-0 lead by the third, and eventually taking the win 11-4. But the tables turned on Sunday when the Indians beat the Cubs, gaining a lead at the third and maintaining it till the end, finishing with the same score as the day before, but this time in favor of Cleveland. This big league weekend was different than others due to the fact that it's the last big league weekend held at Cashman Field. Cubs star and Vegas native Chris Bryant reminisced on this. You know, the stadium has been, I don't even know how long it's been here, but it's been a, a key to the city and now they're getting a new one up actually close to where I live. So um, that's exciting for the city and I can't wait to see that when that's done. Next year, Big League Weekend will be back, this time at the Las Vegas Ballpark in Summerlin. And there are already rumors that they will be adding more games. For the Rebel Report, I'm Lufira Negrete. Both games turned out to be sellouts, which meant that the Cubs have, have had 22 sellouts over the past 14 years that they've been going part of Big League Weekend. And with the return of the Cubs, as you saw, also marks the return of Las Vegas native Chris Bryant. Michaela Jackson caught up with our hometown hero, who continues to evolve not only as a player, but as a great representative of Las Vegas. The evolution of Chris Bryant continues to grow and grow, from playing high school baseball to representing the Chicago Cubs. The 2016 National League MVP Chris Bryant returns to his hometown for his fifth consecutive big league weekend here at Cashman Field. Before the game on Saturday, March 17th, Chris Bryant met Jacob Kanka. Jacob threw the first pitch and is currently battling cancer. During the 2016 World Series, in Game 6, Bryant hit a solo home run against Cleveland Indians on November 1st. You know, we realize it's going to be tough to win the World Series every year. It's going to be tough to get there every year. Um, but we're pretty proud of what we've done these last three years. So 
I think if we can just continue on what we've been doing, I think we're going to set us put ourselves up in some pretty good positions. But um, man, yeah, it was just winning that one World Series. It took a lot out of us. So, Father Mike Bryant spoke about how he sees his son grow every year. No, he's just maturing and getting more comfortable. He's earned his spot, so he's go he's going to approach spring training a little bit differently. There's a sense of urgency, but it's not a radical sense of urgency anymore, you know, where he was, you know, he had something to prove, not only to himself, but to the organization. So I think he, by establishing himself, he's been able to, to kind of relax a little bit, settle into his roles and responsibilities, you know, as a baseball player. Those first couple times I've came, um, I guess I was a little nervous. Um, a lot of people here, a lot of my family, you know, you just want to impress them, but now, um, you know, where I'm at now in my career and kind of settled in and stuff like that. Um, now I can really just enjoy this and enjoy playing in front of, my, you know, my grandparents who don't ever get a chance to see me play too often and my aunts and uncles and obviously my parents and my wife's side of the family. So I, it's uh, gone big evolution from the first time I've gotten here and now I just really have a, a great time and I really enjoy it. After this weekend, the Cubs gave Chris Bryant a day off. He was able to play golf with his father and spend time with his family in his hometown. For the Royal Report, I'm Michaela Jackson. Chris tells us he sets individual goals for himself each season. He actually types out his goals on his phone so he can see them every day. Thank God for iPhones. <laughs> right? The newest pro team to come to town, the Las Vegas Lights, are making sure it lives up to its name. The home uniform is, well, lit. The team's unveilings are becoming one of a kind, and it didn't disappoint with the new away uniform. The Plaza Hotel was the venue where Lights fans saw the new uniform, met the players, the staff, even the coaches. Many fans were new to the game thanks to the arrival of the Lights. With the music playing and the autographs going, it was the perfect occasion to not only announce the official roster, but in a unique twist, the jerseys were painted on the players who were used as a canvas. Not only was the staff excited for it, the fans love the jersey and are anxious to see the team in action. Amazing. Excited, amazing. The away jerseys, as you can see, amazing. Uh, I can't wait for what's coming in the future as far as uh, the games. It seems like they got the team set up, they're locked down. Uh, even having the opportunity to meet, uh, as you can see, I got everybody's autograph on my jersey. I mean, it's something else. I mean, I feel at home. I feel at home here. The Lights beat Fresno 3-2 in their first away game March 17th and will face Reno in the first regular season game at Cashman Field March 22nd. After a lengthy five-game road trip, the Golden Knights returned to T-Mobile Arena on March 14th to take on the New Jersey Devils, who are hoping to get revenge on Vegas for beating them in New Jersey the week before. There's no place like home. The Golden Knights back at T-Mobile to face the Devils after a two-week road trip, courtesy of the Pac-12 tournament invading the Fortress. Devils turned up the heat just about everywhere but the press box and handed the Knights their biggest home loss of the season, 8-3. And Coach Gallant wasn't having any of it with the media. Um, you switched up the forward lines a bit in the third period. Was that something where you were maybe sending a message to the guys they weren't playing that well, or you're just trying to jumpstart things, change things up a little bit? What do you think? When it's 8-2, eight, eight what do you think the coach is going to do? Jumpstart things a little bit. So it's a weird game. <laughs> Next question, please. Anything else for coach tonight? Do two more, Vince and then Jesse. It was too we'll late up. to jumpstart. Uh, we just got to find a way sometimes. It, it's not always going to be perfect, and obviously we saw that tonight. That's the weirdest, weirdest game I've been a part in my career so far, but um, I don't know what to say. It happened, and we got to move on from it and, and uh, be ready for the next one. Playoffs begin April 11th, and despite a recent string of losses at home, things are looking better after winning back-to-back -back home games. The Golden Knights lead the way in the Pacific Division. Rebel Report! Time out! On this week's Rebel Report Time Out, we are welcoming a new member to our UNLV family, Christy Fox, head coach of softball. 
thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. We appreciate you being here. Absolutely. And so you are a new member. This is your first year with UNLV. How does it feel to be a part of our family? It's great. I got the job over the summer and it's been an absolute whirlwind. Um, I had a baby in October and we've been hitting it hard all fall and, and the girls have done a really great job and everybody has been so welcoming to me and um, the whole UNLV family, including all of the athletic department, it's been a really great transition. And so how is the season going so far for you and your team? Um, the girls are doing really well. We had um, a, quite a good preseason. We played some really top-notch teams, including the number one team in the country. We've learned a lot. I think that we've set ourselves up really well to go out and, and compete well in the Mountain West Conference. Um, I've been really impressed. This group of young ladies does a great job of showing up for every game and giving everything that they've got and um, making adjustments when we don't do the right things. So it's, it's been a really good preseason for this team. You go through practices, you travel together, you have games. What does it mean to you to build relationships with your players? Um, it's really important. We really talk about kind of having a family atmosphere when we talk about our softball program. Um, my husband's an assistant coach. Our two boys are around all the time. Um, and, and they have a really close relationship with our players. So we really talk about the family atmosphere. Um, they do spend a lot of time together. So it's really important that when we recruit we recruit people that are going to kind of thrive in the UNLV environment. So they've done a good job of that so far, and the girls have really bonded together. It's been great. Have you guys had have any team bonding activities that you do together, like not just practices, but you, like you go somewhere, maybe karaoke or top golf? I know the girls spend a lot of time together outside of softball. We try to give them that time to spend outside, but um, we do. Um, a team activity every time we're on the road in the morning when we have a long wait before our six o'clock game, we'll do a team activity. And the last one we had was the human knot um, where they all cross hands and they spent a good probably 45 minutes trying to get out of it. <laughs> so it, they're, they're really good. They're really ambitious. They stick together. So we do quite a bit of that. Do you have any first year goals that you have set for yourself and your players? You know, we try to keep our vo core values very, very simple. And um, a lot of the things we talk about are throwing and catching, executing, two at RBIs. And that's kind of what we're basing the softball side of things against. Um, and they've done a really good job of that. So every time we talk post game, we're talking about those few things that they can control. Um, so those are kind of our goals is, is limiting the errors, playing catch, um, stepping up with the game on the line and, and being somebody different every single game. And then uh, our new athletic director, Desiree, she, you were her first hire. How does that feel to you to be part of her? It history? feels great. I mean, I think that, you know, when coaches are coming and looking at positions, um, you know, UNLV is looking for their right fit. And then as coaches, we're looking for the right fit ourselves as well, where we're going to go and be successful and have the, the right kind of support. And she was a huge reason why I decided that this would be a good place for me and my family to come and thrive. And we're really excited about all the positive things that the athletic department um, has coming its way. And we're just excited to be a part of it. So you were a assistant coach for the uh, Big 12 member, Texas Tech. You played for Arizona. So how does those conferences compare to the Mountain West? Um, I think those are really strong conferences in the Power Five, and I learned a lot from my experience. I think the Mountain West is, is really special in the fact that we have a lot of parity on the softball side. Um, a couple teams have, have done really well at the top um, quite a bit, but I think that the times are changing, and there's uh, going to be some different people getting those opportunities. Um, one thing that's special about softball is we've been tending to get an at-large bid into the NCAAs, so having more than one opportunity to go to the show is really important. So if you kind of do have a good, strong preseason and finish well um, in the Mountain West, you still have an opportunity to go to the NCAA and go to the World Series, which I've been to, and I've got to hold the trophy, and those are the kind of experiences I want my players to have. That would be great for our team. Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Now I'm sending it over to Sarah with our, this week's panel discussion. Thanks, Michaela. Today we'll talk about mental health in the NBA. The Las Vegas Lights open their inaugural season home game against Reno on Saturday and how the Wolfpack is doing in March Madness. I'm joined with Lupita, Megan, and Brandon. Thank you guys for being here. Lupita, I want to start with you um, regarding the mental health case in the NBA. Recently, we had Royce White. He came out and said that the NBA doesn't really do a lot to ensure that the players have good mental health. What should they be doing? Yeah, so, well, so to some 
backstory to that. It was, yeah, he kind of, he basically kind of left the NBA after his team. He was with the Rockets. The front office just kind of said, you kind of are impossible to work with because he wanted to take buses to the, because he suffers from anxiety. So he wanted to take buses to some of the away games. And they told him that was impossible because that, that they would have to do that, like, the league-wide. So I think that just the NBA just needs to be more, they're, they're doing some stuff now. They, they're hiring a new director of mental health and wellness. So they're kind of revamping their mental health program. They had one before, but it wasn't too prominent. And now I think they should just, I guess, offer the services that the players need. And if like, f say, because with mental health, it's just as important as physical health. So, and they go hand in hand often, more often than not. And so I think they just need to really just offer the services, connect them, connect them to services, kind of destigmatize the whole mental health thing, because I think some players are scared of coming out and asking for help because of that. So that's what I think what they should do. <laughs> Moving on from mental health to soccer, something a little bit more positive. Um, the Las Vegas Lights are opening their inaugural um, season against Reno, which they do have a rivalry against. How do you think that'll go, Megan? overall hopefully it'll go okay um i don't know how much how like anxious the team is to play against them because they are a new team and this is their first home game of the regular season but um i know vegas and reno have a rivalry between the two schools already so i don't know if that will transfer over to the teams as well so vegas golden knights our hockey team they killed they're killing their inaugural season do you think we can see the same thing uh, with the lights do you see that coming um, I'm hoping it's, they're two very different games and I personally used to play soccer so I know how hard it is to get a goal for certain people. So, and I'm not a very good hockey, like I don't know too much about hockey so I would hope that they would get a good soccer game going on, but we'll see how the season goes. I do have to agree with you. I do hope <laughs> <laughs> that they do well. I'm um, talking about rivalries, Brandon. Um, so UNR, our rival against UNLV, the Wolfpack, they're in March Madness right now. How do you think they're doing so far? They're doing like really good, actually. So uh, I think they, they can beat Loyola Chicago. And once they do that, you know, it will show that, I don't know, they might make it all the way. But I think as UNLV students, I think it'll be, you know, okay if we, if we, you know, like, um, if we cheer for them too, you know. So you are in support of UNLV yeah, students cheering. Yeah, for just because they're a Nevada team. All right. So, what know, do you guys not? think about that? Should we be cheering for them? Absolutely. No. <laughs> I think we should. Well, if you don't hear your side, you say no. No. Just no. <laughs> no, I will be. You are you in support of the Vegas Lights, though? Yeah. <laughs> so not you and I, but like Vegas Lights. Yeah, well, I mean, they're Vegas. So not, you know. <laughs> Brandon, do you think the Vegas Lights should be, do you think they'll do good, like Definitely. how the Golden Knights are doing? Uh, I don't know how, if they'll do that good, but <laughs> we'll see. They won their first game. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a true. good start. Yeah. <laughs> will you guys be there? Will you guys be covering the game at all? Yeah, I'll be there. Brand, all you guys are going. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> it's classical now. I think they just renamed it to, to to make it like a, I guess a tradition against Reno. So it'll be good. Interesting. <laughs> it will it will definitely be interesting to see how they play on a, a Saturday and definitely how we see you and R doing personally. I'll be rooting for you and R. <laughs> but that is our time for today. I want to send it back to the table. The Las Vegas Players Showcase welcomes young high school soccer athletes from around the country to show off their skills. These teenagers have an opportunity to impress college scouts, and as Megan Platt explains, maybe even win a college scholarship. The Las Vegas Players Showcase is an annual showcase every March. The tournament purpose is to showcase the top boys and girls youth club soccer teams from around the country. It's for teams from all over the country to come out. Um, they play in front of lots of college coaches. It's really not about winning or losing, although of course you want to win if you can. But the girls can showcase themselves and the college coaches look out there and decide who they want to, who they're interested in and who they possibly will contact and to go to their schools. Over 700 teams representing the country's best players, including 96 teams representing the USYS National League, competed in this year's event. So I overall enjoyed the game. I mean, I think we started off a little rusty because we're coming back from high school. I mean, 
everyone's a little bit out of shape, but we're getting there. Um, I'm really excited for the rest of the weekend. I think we'll definitely improve as the weekend goes on, and I'm excited to see all the coaches come out because we're all here for our future. This showcase provides an unparalleled opportunity for the players to showcase their talents and skills for the college recruiters to evaluate and scout their new players. It went all right. We had some difficulties connecting together, but overall we pushed through it and we came back with a goal and we tied 1-1, which was a pretty good result for the showcase. And overall we started clicking together throughout the game and progressed. as we progressed, it got better. Months upon months of planning are put into this showcase, putting the best matchups together to ensure the highest level of exposure for these young athletes. You know, it's a showcase, so although you always want to win, the result's not as important in a showcase as a tournament, um, because this is an opportunity really for the girls to showcase themselves with the college coaches, so it's a little bit more about how they look individually, how they look playing with the team. Here at Heritage Park, we just finished watching the Las Vegas Player Showcase. It's also featured at UNLV, and it's an annual showcase in the Valley. For a report, I'm Megan Platt. Over 500 coaches and scouts were there to evaluate the talent of 700 teams from across the nation. Well, UNLV is full of talented athletes in every sport, but we decided it'd be interesting to find out some other talents our athletes have. Our, our, our very own Brandon McGregory did some digging and found a football player that can do a lot more than catch passes in this week's Show Me Your Skills. Show Me Your Skills. Today we're here with Makai Stevenson wide receiver for the UNLV football team to see what type of hidden talents he has for us. That car is going to take you to the airport. I have to go if they're not going to know. Who are you? Sydney, get in that car. They're only going to wait 60 seconds. Then they'll leave with or without you. You don't have time not to trust me. In the eyes of the agency, you've committed treason. And you've gone AWOL. In high school, when I started making music, um, the big idea was to... Um, learn how to shoot music videos for myself. I didn't have no money in high school to pay people $300 to do a music video for me. So I took a class in high school, a film production class, to learn how to shoot music videos and stuff for myself. But eventually, I found a love for it. And then um, once I started getting scholarships, I started talking to the coaches here at UNLV and they told me they had a film program. So that's how I actually got into the acting thing. You may never know what other talents UNLV athletes might have. You can catch the UNLV football team as they play USC September 1st. For Rebel Report, I'm Brendan McGregory. Thanks, Brandon. That really reminds me of a young Tupac from Juice. <laughs> Makai truly has a gift. This makes me wonder what other talents some of our other student athletes have. That's all for today's episode. Well, Haley, how's your bracket going? It's over. It's all done. Oh, yeah, you had Virginia, didn't you? I did. Who did you have? Uh, I have Kansas. They're still in it. Hopefully I win. Nice. At, at least John Castanino, our producer, is out of it. Thank God for that. Yeah. And as long as he's out of it and I win, I mean, all bets are hey, off. I don't even care if I win. <laughs> I did not want him to win. That's, That's true. I'll be happy, too. But I love you, John. <laughs> be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Rebel Report UNLV for the latest updates and on Instagram at Rebel Report underscore UNLV. Have a great weekend and see you next time.